Well, I want to welcome you back to the 831 podcast, and uh, I'm Jungle Jim Hunter, and I appreciate you taking the time to listen today. This week, we're going through the Personal Dare series, and I'm answering questions that people most often ask me after I've done a presentation, or I've gotten to know them, or they have come up to me and said, uh, how did you do this? How did you become an Olympic skier coming from Saskatchewan, and how did you do it having a concussion? And I've heard your story, I heard you speak, and wow, it's just amazing. But six and a half years later, you win a medal, and you were declared at one point as being mentally handicapped after your accident. And so I hope you'll stay with me this week. These are, personal dare is what it developed into from watching my father and mother and the way they raised us and trained us. And I couldn't help but thinking about doing this series because of the Super Bowl. And hearing the veteran sports announcer asking Tom Brady, what does this mean to you, Tom? And Tom Brady looks at him and he never answers his question. He asked him three times and he never asked him. He looks at the team and he says, guys, this is for you. You did this. You did this. And Tom Brady gets it. He understands what my dad understood. It's about what you do to lead in such a way that the people that observe you, his children sitting there observed him, give the credit to all of his players, his team. He never used the word I. And that's the point. It was never about my dad. It was never about my mom. It was about what they desired to accomplish and do for their children. So the second question yesterday was, how do I build or develop or grow personal discipline? Today is, how do I develop personal accountability? And in this series on personal dare, we are facing the most often asked questions that I have had from kids and parents and coaches and people. And no one likes confrontation, and yet it is the door we must open the easiest to growth. Yes, the growth to change is the door we must open the easiest. And yet, it's the one that we fight with the hardest. No one likes confrontation. And how you handle confrontation reveals how difficult it will be to coach you. You must be willing to face a confrontation and deconstruct what you know and then be willing to do what you must do to reconstruct what has to be changed. And as a result, you are transformed into a better you. And so the sooner you are willing to do it to yourself, the quicker you grow. The seed in the ground does not say to the farmer, take me out of this dark, damp, deep dirt and let me sit in the warmth of the sun. If it does, it won't be long before it ends up being birdseed. But if it lets the transforming take place in the dirty, dark, wet soil, it soon produces five to eight stalks with heads of wheat and produces somewhere between 200 and 300 seeds, which multiplies itself by 200 or 300. And so when do you teach accountability? How should you teach accountability? You teach it right from the time that they can start to feed themselves. You don't let them say no to (laughs) good vegetables. As a matter of fact, you start out feeding them vegetables so that that's what they always eat. I'm Jungle Jim Hunter, and you're listening to 831 Living Your Best Life podcast, and I hope I inspire you and empower you today. And go to your favorite podcast provider and download the 831 or Jungle Jim Hunter and subscribe and click on like and let us know how we can help you. Well, as I've been talking this week about this series in Personal Dare, Dad did things the Hunter way. This is the way we do it. It was knowing you would be accountable for every word, action, and outcome. And as I said before, Dad didn't have this all written down in a plan. He wasn't perfect at it. None of us were. We didn't do it perfectly all the time. We made a lot of mistakes. But Dad set you up to learn this without realizing it, and that's what he did with all of these. 
He gave clear instructions on how to spread the straw. He would place the bales in such a place away in the loose housing barn that you were to spread it out with the fork. And you knew you were supposed to pick up all the strings and spread the straw evenly so the cows would have a warm place to sleep when it's as cold as it is right now. And the cows would be comfortable for the night and the heat of their bodies would warm it up so much so in that loose housing barn that you could sleep on the back of a cow all night if you wanted to because it would be so warm. When you feed the cows, he would put the bales in front of the holes and we were to drop them down through the holes, not on the cow's head, and then take the strings off. Always take the strings off. Why? Because it can kill a cow. So he was very accountable for what you did. And you dropped them in, you took the strings, and you spread it. The same with the straw bales. And we did all of these things, including milking the cows in a very precise way. We did air spelling all the way, all the time. He would sit on your knee. He would sit on his knee driving the tractor or the combine or the truck. And he would give you a word to spell and he would make you spell it using your head. And then he would do air math. I call them air spelling, air math. I did it to my kids. He did it while he was cultivating, while he was seeding. How long? He would do it as long as he possibly could. Then he would give you a calculation to figure out how long it would take you to cultivate a field. He would say, we're going so fast, and this is how many feet we cut, and this is how many acres it takes. And you had to do the math. And if you got it wrong, he would say, no, you're not quite right. Let's start over. And he would hold you to it. You said it. You agreed to it. You did it. And if you made an agreement with him to do this and do anything that he asked you to do, you were held accountable to it. This built congruency in you. And you need to be congruent so that what you say and what you do match. You're not a fake. You're not phony. And if you finish things on time, that was great. If you finished ahead of time, he congratulated you. If you finished it late, he would say you broke the agreement. This was the hunter way. In what way do you do things? What can you learn from today's podcast that will help you live your best life? Are you coachable? Or are you already thinking of all the arguments you are waiting to spout and you're talking over me while I'm speaking to you on this podcast saying, but, but, but. And if you are, then you are not coachable. And you find it uneasy to be accountable. I've seen people working where they always are talking over each other and they never accomplish anything. Why? Because they don't ever hear what the other person actually said. You've already developed all your excuses for why you cannot live your best life. And as a result, you can't live your best life. Poor leaders and followers start their excuses with these words, who, what, where, when, and why. Great ones ask how questions. That's all they ask. They really don't care about the others. They just ask how. How questions that always move toward how can I help the other person? Not how can I help myself? How can I help the other person? One who learns from accountability develops understanding and grows in wisdom. Dad used how to increase your understanding Build the qualities of a learner and a grower, and thus a wiser person. You are growing personal accountability when you have teachability. That means you're quick to hear, open to counsel, and respond to reproof. Availability, able to be interrupted and accessible. Vulnerability, admit wrong, show wrong, and strengthen by the wounding. Yes, when you're wrong, you get stronger if you're willing to be shown and accept the fact that you need to change. And honesty. You have to be committed to being congruent within yourself. There has to be a truth with you, even if it hurts. Each spring, we had to clean out the loose housing barn and spread all that manure on the fields to fertilize the crop. It would be five feet of manure. It smells... And the thought of it seems gross. But you know what? We would spread it over our fields, and where the fertilizer was, we grew the best crops with that natural fertilizer. That's what accountability is. 
It's natural fertilizer. When you think of personal accountability as your fertilizer, you start to grow. My quote for the day, if all your accounts are congruent, there is a great chance you will have the ability to live your life to the limits. I'm Jungle Jim Hunter, and you've been listening to 831 Living Your Best Life podcast. I hope you were inspired and empowered. Please let other people know and have them go to their favorite podcast provider and download it and subscribe and click on like and let us know how we can help you. Tomorrow, we're going to talk about personal responsibility. Thanks for listening. 